Welcome to Chorus Stories. Are you ready to meditate with Cory? Hello, my little friends. I just wanted to take a quick minute before your meditation story to say hi and thank you and I appreciate you very, very much. Thank you for listening to my stories. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel and like your meditation or your video if you liked it and make sure to press the bell so that you get notified every time I bring out a new story. One last thing, if you love Heidi, Cherry and Vea or Tucker and Leo stories, you can join the cat club or the dog club. Go to my patron link down below I leave it there on every meditation. Talk to your parents or your guardians about whether you can join my patron group. Hope you have a wonderful time listening to my story. Bye, see you next time. Are you ready to meditate with Kari? Climb up into your bed and make sure that you're super comfortable. Try and stay as still as you can as you listen to the story. So your body can slow down and relax. And hopefully you can fall asleep. On this particular night, it was a full moon outside. Heidi, Cherry and Vea were sat round the kitchen island with Leo having a cup of tea. They were talking about their day. Tucker interrupted. you never guess what I just found. you never guess what I just found. Look at this lovely, lovely stone. He dropped it on the floor, out of his mouth. Everyone looked down at the ground and noticed a shiny, big stone. It looked like a glass stone. It wasn't like a diamond. It looked like an opal. It was milky, but glass-like and shiny, and it had gold veins through it. It was a really, really pretty stone. Leo jumped down off his chair and went and picked it up with his mouth and then plopped it on the kitchen island so everyone could see it better. It was about as big as your palm. It was pretty. And the lights from the kitchen ceiling were shining down and reflecting off the golden veins that ran through it. And it sent sparkles all through the kitchen. It's delicious looking, isn't it? It's so nice. I've never seen a stone like it. I was just digging away, minding my own business. I kept looking over my shoulder in case Mummy came out to catch me because she knows she doesn't like me digging, especially when she just put new plants in the garden. But I couldn't help myself. It was as if I was on a mission and I was sniffing out some magical jewel or something. Something from the sky above was talking to me. I don't know whether it was that full moony up there or what but uh, I think it was I think that full moony was saying dig away Tucker dig away you're going to find a treasure and that treasure is going to be very very special and then this voice I think it was the moony he said yes yes and when you find that treasure you're going to have a very, very fun time. And I was like, oh, of course, Mr. Mooney, I'll get that treasure. I was digging and digging and digging. And then my nose hit it. And I could, I could tell straight away that that was what Mr. Mooney wanted me to find. Jerry said, OMG, Tucker, you do realise you sound absolutely bazonkers. You sound crazy, Tucker, like you're not all there in the head or something. Who on earth listens to Mr. Moon? Anyway, who says it's a mister? I always look up the moon and up at the moon and I think, oh, ain't she pretty? I don't ever think, oh, ain't he pretty? In fact, I know this for a fact, right, that that moon is a woman. She definitely is a girl. Heidi said, actually, moon energy is female, Tucker, so Cherry's right. 
Jerry said. Of course I am. I'm so smart on this one. I'm so smart, you know. Well, I'm smart all the time, but this, this I know for sure, Tucker. Tucker said, well, Mrs. Mooney then. Mrs. Mooney said, it's a special stone. That's what she said to me, Cherry. And don't you question me when it comes to this, because I have a very special knack for hearing voices. I get them all the time in my head. Cherry started laughing. <sighs> I'm sure you do, Tucker. Only crazy people get voices in their head. No, 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 no. Tell her, Leo, my voices, sometimes they're very magical. They're like, they're like the gods in the sky talking to me and they tell me things. And I listen and look, look what happened when I listened. I listened and we got this beautiful stone. Vea picked the stone up and said, Oh my, it is beautiful. I wonder what its magic is. Cherry said, Oh, MG, Vey, are you not believing in this, are you? Are you believing in these, these crazy things that Tucker's saying? He's nutso. Vea said, Tucker is not nutso, Cherry. He's just very sensitive to things like that. And I totally agree with him. I think that this stone is very magical. I can just feel it. Heidi took the stone off Vea and held it in her paw, up towards the light, peering up through her glasses at it as if to say, What is it? Then she walked over to the back door that Tucker had just bounded through and held it up to the moon. And when she held it up to the moon, she shouted for everyone to come and look. Everyone ran over to where Heidi was standing at the back door. They all stared at the stone that she was holding up towards the moon. The stone had wings, a pattern of wings inside of it, as if an angel was inside of the stone, and her wings were moving backwards and forwards, as if she was alive in there. Cherry gulped. Vea said, oh, Tucker, you were right, I knew it. The angel looked at them all and said, You get one wish. Just one wish. Tucker said, Oh no, she's like that genie. That genie in a bottle, but to think in a bottle you get three wishes. With this particular stone you only get one wish. Leo said, Oh, this is dangerous. Cherry said, OMG, Leo, chill out. Relax your pants a bit. It's not dangerous. It's magical. Tucker said, Oh, so now you're on my team, are you? Well, yes, it's magical. Look at her. She's beautiful. What's your name? Tucker said to the stone. One wish. You get just one wish. All of them looked at each other. I wonder what she's called. She's so pretty. I don't think I've ever seen anything as pretty in my entire life. She was just like an angel of light, shining really bright with the moonlight shining on her. Heidi moved the stone in the house and she disappeared. And then she moved it back up towards the moon, back on the back door, and it came back. She was there again. You get just one wish. One wish, she said. They all looked at each other. Heidi announced that no one make a wish in their mind. They have to all agree on the wish. But it was too late. Leo, of all of them, instantly thought about what he would wish for. He was stood there in jeans and a t-shirt. Cherry looked at Leo, gasped and fell backwards. She fell into Vea and when she fell into Vea, she turned around and felt Vea's crinkly, crispy, net, puffy skirt that she wasn't wearing earlier. She looked up at Vea, and Vea had long blonde hair, 
and the prettiest blue eyes, and a tiny little girl nose and mouth. Her lips were pink, like rosebuds, and she smiled. Oh, my, Freya said. I'm a girl. Cherry looked down at her body instantly. She was a little bit taller than Vea. Bright red curly hair with freckles all over her face. Oh my gosh, she said. And then she looked at Heidi. Heidi had black hair and she had her glasses on that were black rimmed glasses that matched her hair perfectly. And she looked very, very much like Thelma from Scooby-Doo. She was wearing jeans and a t-shirt with a sweater vest over it that had checks on it. Totally looked like what Heidi would look like if she was a girl. Cherry was wearing an OMG t-shirt and a denim skirt with Converse. She was pretty cool. Leo was very tall, and he looked kind of shy and awkward. He looked like he was about 16 or something. She couldn't believe what he looked like, like a boy. She'd only ever seen him as a dog. And then Tucker, Tucker was like this really cool, cheeky-looking teenager. He had black, shiny hair and big, big brown eyes with long, black, fluffy eyelashes. And she looked at him and felt her heart skip a beat. OMG, Tucker, look at yourself. Tucker looked at his reflection through the window. He was really kind of handsome and cute. If you can imagine, he looked a bit like Justin Bieber, but with black hair and big brown eyes. He looked like he would be one of those really popular dudes at school. Cherry was very, very, very happy about being a human girl. I don't know who it was that thought of this, but, oh, I love it, she said. They all sounded similar, but a little bit different. They sounded like themselves, but they sounded like what they would sound like if they were actually human beings. Tucker said, Oh, this is the best. This is the best. Leo sounded a little bit more meek and mild and said, Sorry about that, guys. It's the first thing that popped into my head. Vea said, oh, We have to go somewhere. You know what I've always wanted to do if I was a girl or a boy or like just human in general? I've always wanted to go roller skating. Can we go to the local roller skating ring? They play such great music. We could have slurpees. We can roller skate and we can meet lots of other teenage kids. Vea looked as if she was about 12 or 13. Heidi looked like she was 16, 17. Cherry, maybe 14, 15. Tucker looked about the same age as Cherry. Everyone agreed that it sounded like a really cool thing to do, to go roller skating. It was Friday night after all, and it was a full moon. So that's what they did. They all walked, wasn't very far, to the local roller skating ring. They could hear the music outside as they stood in line waiting to get in. There was loads and loads of kids around their age, and it was awesome. Cherry's eyeballs were all over the place. She didn't know where to look. She was dancing away in line as if she was so excited she couldn't wait to get in. Tucker was doing the same thing. But he was looking kind of cool at the same time. Leo was just kind of kicking his feet. And Vea, well, she looked all dreamy at every single person that passed her, checking out their outfits, checking out what they were wearing, looking at her own outfit, thinking, 
Hopefully she would see someone that dressed like her, that looked like they had the same interests as her. But everyone else looked like more casual. Not a single kid had on a princess dress. She felt a little bit awkward at first, but then she was like, Oh, I'm just going to go with it. This is me. Who cares what anybody else is wearing? When they got inside, there was disco lights flashing over the roller skating ring. And there was tons and tons and tons of kids on there, all different ages. Most of them were around teenage age or pre-teens. It must have been like the cool spot to go when you're a kid. Cherry was stood there. And then she sniffed her armpits and said, OMG! I actually smell sweaty. I'm so nervous. <gasps> oh, I don't think I like being a human being. They stink. Heidi sniffed Cherry's armpit and said, Oh, gosh, maybe you should have showered. Cherry said, OMG, what am I going to do? Vea had a bag with her that had perfume in it and deodorant. And she had a hairbrush, and she had a lip seal in there, and she also had a ponytail, uh, some grips, and, oh, some nail polish remover in case she ruined her nails. Vea had absolutely everything that was necessary to look beautiful and clean and sweet. Cherry said, OMG, Vea, trust you to be one of those girls that has absolutely everything that you always need. Actually, you're one of those that's a really good friend to have around, because I wouldn't have even thought about putting on deodorant. Vea said, it's deodorant, not deodorant. Cherry said, shh, I'm trying to get used to being human. It's so darn weird. Oh, no, she said. I think I need to pee. What do we do? Heidi said. The bathrooms are over there. You go to the bathroom. Cherry said. Oh, on a toilet. Oh, gosh. It reminds me of those fancy toilets that we went on that time when we went to Japan. Oh, do you think it's going to be like that? What if it flushes really loud and it sucks me in? Vea said. Cherry, I'll go with you, and then we'll watch some of the other girls and, and watch what they do, and then we'll just do that. Heidi said, I'll be out there on the ring if you need me, okay? Tucker and Leo followed Heidi onto the roller skating ring and started skating. Luckily, as kids, well, teenagers, well, pre-teenagers, well, just, you know, human beings, they all could skate. Tucker found a bunch of girls and started skating with them. He was skating backwards and showing off. Leo looked at Tucker with envy as if to say, I wish I was that brave. Leo was not trying to talk to a bunch of girls. Leo was just getting used to having legs. He noticed when he was putting on his roller skates that he had hairs on his legs. He was used to being hairy as a dog, but this was weird. Heidi noticed that even as a human, Leo was still kind of shy. She decided the whole time that they were there that she would kind of keep him under her wing, take care of him, make sure that he was safe. Tucker did not need any help. At one point, she noticed that Tucker was spinning and doing tricks. And all the girls were cheering and swooning around him. He kept flicking his long black hair and his long fluffy eyelashes, blinking, all cute. Cherry and Vea, in the meantime, in the bathroom, had figured out how to pee on a toilet. They washed their hands because that's what everyone else was doing. Vea put on some lip seal in the mirror. It was tinted with a little bit of pink colour and it made her little rosebud lips even more pink. Cherry borrowed it and noticed that the pink did not go with her bright orange hair. She wiped it off with the back of her hand and decided to go natural. 
She liked her frettles, though. She had so many. Tons and tons and tons of frettles all over her face, on the back of her hands, on her arms, on her legs. They were everywhere. She liked them a lot. It made her feel like she was like a big giant cookie that had tons of chocolate chips all over it. So cool, she said, in the mirror. Vea and Cherry eventually joined everyone else on the roller skating ring and they had a really good night. Before everyone got chucked out of the place, Heidi, Cherry and Vea, Tucker and Leo, come back together and went over to where you could buy food. Cherry tried a corn dog for the first time. She loved it. She got mustard all over her face. Tucker said, Maybe it's not that cool that you kind of eat like that, Cherry, as a girl. Cherry looked at Tucker and said, Tucker, OMG, you're so weird as a boy. But really, she thought he was cute. What Cherry didn't know was, was that Tucker thought Cherry was cute too. And then they all walked home with the corn dogs, the pizzas, the slurpees and everything that they bought from the food court before they left. The moon was shining bright down on them and it was a warm, nice night. It was lovely to be outside and actually feel a soft breeze on your skin instead of being furry all over. Rhea kept closing her eyes and putting her face up to the moon as if she was soaking it all in, trying to make it last. She had a feeling it wasn't going to last. But also, she had a feeling that she didn't want it to last. She liked being a cat. It was super cool being a girl and experiencing everything that you experience as a girl. But she noticed that she had complicated feelings that she didn't feel as a cat. She felt insecure about her outfit there for a while. And she compared herself to the other girls. She didn't like that. She felt insecure about things. She didn't normally feel like that as a cat. She was quite secure in herself as a cat. There seemed to be so much more pressure as well. Pressure to be cool or to fit in or to look a certain way. She didn't feel like that as a cat. She decided it was quite hard to be a girl that was almost, almost grown up. Cherry absolutely loved it. Heidi wasn't so sure. Leo said, it's going to take some getting used to. And Tucker said, he wanted to stay like that forever. When they all got back to the house, the stone was there on the kitchen island and Heidi walked over to the moon and held it back up to the moon and the angel with the wings inside appeared again and she said, and that's the end of that. She closed her wings around her, bowed down her head, and all the cats and the dogs became themselves again. The stone and the gold veins that ran through it all changed form too. And then Heidi was just holding up this brown, greyish stone that didn't look that interesting at all. It looked like every other stone in the garden. Everything special about it had disappeared. Cherry looked down at her cat body and said, Oh, OMG. Oh, I'm kind of relieved. Bea said, Me too, definitely. Tucker said, Oh, oh, I thought it might last at least a few days. Now I'm going to have to go digging again. 
Leo walked over to his dog bed and laid down and didn't say anything. Closed his eyes and decided it was time for a nap. The End